welcome to another A-Level Computer Science video with me, Mr. Goff, for MrGoff.com. This video will focus on TCP IP. TCP IP is the most common method for transmitting data packets over the internet. It is made up of the transmission control protocol and internet protocol. It operates across four connected layers, the application layer, transport layer, internet layer, sometimes referred to as network layer, and the link layer. You will often hear it referred to as the TCP IP stack. This is because data moves down the stack at the sending end to become packaged, and up the stack at the receiving end to be unpacked and reassembled. The application layer is where applications reside. The kind of application used determines the protocol that will be used, for example, HTML to retrieve web pages, or SMTP to send an email. Our example is going to look at sending an email. So first of all, our data is wrapped up in a package that states what protocol is to be used and passed onto the transport layer. The transport layer is where transmission control protocol operates. It establishes an end-to-end -end connection with the receiving computer. It then splits the data into packets and labels them with the packet number and total number of packets in the transmission, as well as the port number, which is dependent on the protocol. At the receiving end, the transport layer uses the packet numbers to reassemble the message and identify and re-request any missing packets. The internet layer is sometimes called the network layer or IP layer. This is where source and destination IP addresses are added. Routers operate at this level. At the receiving end, IP addresses are stripped from packets before they are passed to the transport layer. A socket is a combination of an IP address and a port number, such as our destination IP address and the port number 25 that we're using in our example. A socket tells us what device data is going to based on the IP address and what application on that device requires it based on the port being used. The link layer refers to the actual physical connection. This is where MAC addresses operate. The MAC address of our router and the next router in the chain are added to the packets. At the other end, these are stripped off again by the link layer. In fact, each time our packet arrives at a new router, the link layer removes the MAC addresses and passes the packet to the internet layer. Here, the destination IP address is compared with the current IP address, and if it doesn't match, then the router finds the next best router to pass the data onto and passes it back to the link layer. Here, the MAC address of the current router and the next router in sequence are added and it's passed on. It may take quite a number of hops before it eventually reaches its final destination. MAC addresses are unique hard-coded 12 hex digit identifiers for network interface cards. These identify a specific individual device connected to the internet. When data arrives at its final destination, the MAC addresses are stripped off and the data is handed to the internet layer. Here, IP addresses are removed and the data is passed on again to the transport layer. Here, the data is reassembled into order and any missing packets are re-requested. Then it's passed on to the application layer. The original message is then handed to the appropriate application that requested it based on the protocol being used. As mentioned earlier, certain ports are associated with certain protocols. Here are some of the common ones. Port 20 for FTP data transfer, port 21 for FTP command control, port 22 for secure shell, port 23 for telnet, port 25 for SMTP, port 80 or 8080 for HTTP, port 110 for POP3, port 143 for IMAP, and port 443 for HTTPS. The data that is returned to a client is often returned to a temporary arbitrary port number. This is a security measure to try to avoid revealing to hackers which ports may be open. That brings us to the end of this video on TCP IP. 
Join me again soon when I'll be looking at standard application layer protocols. Use the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise computer science. And until next time, it's bye for now.